Good morning. We thank you once again for joining us here at St. Edmund and welcoming us into your home as we celebrate this Mass with you on this first Sunday of Advent. Our gathering hymn, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Good morning and welcome to St. Edmunds. Thank you for joining us for this first Sunday in Advent as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ at Christmas. So let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. In order to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we first, as always, take a moment to call to mind our sins. We ask, we ask God to forgive us this weekend for those times when we have failed to prepare when we have failed to always be ready for our Lord whenever he calls. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant your faithful, we pray, Almighty God, the resolve to run forth to meet your Christ with righteous deeds at his coming, so that, gathered at his right hand, they may be worthy to possess the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. You, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you not let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we fear you not? Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. O oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you while, while you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard from of old. No ear has ever heard, no eyes ever seen, any God but you doing such deeds for those who await for him. Would that you might meet us during doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry, and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves. 
and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to cling to you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the potter. We are all the works of your hands. The word of the Lord. Shepherd of Israel, hearken. From your throne upon the cherubim, shine forth. Rouse your power and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face and we shall be saved. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see. Take care of this vine and protect what your right hand has planted, the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Lord, make us turn to let us see your face, and we shall be saved. May your help be with the man of your right hand, with the Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. Let us see your face, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Jesus Christ, that in him you are enriched in every way with all discourses and all knowledge. As the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you affirm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you are called to the fellowship with his Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Alleluia. salvation. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be watchful, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like a man traveling abroad. He leaves home and places his servants in charge, each with his own work, and orders the gatekeeper to be on watch. Watch, therefore, you do not know when the Lord of the house is coming, whether in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or in the morning. May he not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, watch. The Gospel of the Lord. As we begin this Advent season, we begin with that very famous song that we all know and brings us right into the season, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, and Ransom Captive Israel. In the time of Jesus, as we begin this Advent season and we have just gone through Thanksgiving when people did a lot of traveling, we, or at least normally, maybe not so much this year, and Christmas when, again, normally we do a lot of traveling to see relatives and family. In the time of Jesus, travel was very dangerous. It was very common for people to travel, and if you had any kind of wealth or if you were known to people as someone who was popular, you would often be uh, subject to being kidnapped. And oftentimes you'd be taken away and you'd be held until someone paid a ransom. And so if we reflect on that, what that must be like to be kidnapped, what it must be like to be taken off somewhere that you don't know, or that's not familiar to you. And to be in that place waiting and hoping and trusting that someone, anyone, will come and rescue you. If we think about our lives, if we think about what can happen to us in this life, we can find ourselves in that same situation, perhaps not literally kidnapped, but certainly we can be taken away by the ills of the world, by addiction, or by alcoholism, or we can become enslaved and taken away by our jobs, by wealth, by the thought of having more. And sometimes we can find ourselves carried away. We can find ourselves in these places that we cannot, on our own, come back from. <coughs> we require assistance. We require help. We require someone to come and save us, to pay the ransom needed to return us to safety, return us to where we really need to be. The prophet Isaiah talks in that first reading about the Lord asking, why do you let us wander? Return for the sake of your servants. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. No ear has ever heard, no eye has ever seen any God but you. And we know that that's where our salvation lies. That's who we await. We await God in our lives. For it is only God that can return us to where we ought to be. 
There is only God who can ransom our lives. And although we may, for a time, be away, for a time, captive to these things in life, it is the Advent season in which hopefully we take a moment to think about that. We take a moment to think about how much we need God in our lives. And it's not even that we are totally lost. I mean, Isaiah even says in his reading, all of us have become like unclean people. All of our good deeds are like polluted rags. Even the good we try to do somehow doesn't always measure up. But what does always measure up? What is always something we can count on is our Lord, is God himself. In that second reading, St. Paul reminds us about the grace that is given to us and the peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. He gives thanks to God always for that grace, that free gift given to us, that gift in which we are reminded that it is God who seeks us out. It is God who searches us always. It is God who is constantly trying to bring us back to him. Even when we are lost, especially when we are lost, even when we have perhaps even given up hope, even if we think we are somewhere where no one can find us, it is in fact God who does, who will, who has. So let us think about that as we prepare ourselves on this first Sunday of Advent, as we look forward to the incredible gift that comes to us at Christmas, the gift of Jesus Christ, the gift of God's grace, the gift of that eternal GPS that will find us no matter where we may be lost, that will bring us back no matter how far we think we've gone, that will always be searching for us and will never give up until each and every one of us is found. And now as a people of faith we stand and we profess our faith, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered, he suffered death, death and was buried. buried. On and on rose day, again on the third day in accordance day. with the scriptures. He, he ascended, ascended into heaven and is seated, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world.
can now bring our petitions before our God. Our response is, come Lord Jesus. For our church, that through our actions and words, that we may atone for our sinful ways, especially during this season of watchful expectancy of Christ's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For our young people, that they may be open to God's plan in their lives as we begin to consider their plans for the future. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all of us gathered here today, that we may take the opportunity over the next four weeks to prepare our hearts to receive the Lord with the wonder and joy of the child at Christmas. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For the health and safety of soldiers, relief workers, police, paramedics, firefighters who are serving to bring peace and stability to our world, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. For those who are blind to the inherent dignity of every human being, that the Lord may enlighten their minds and their hearts to recognize the God-given worth of every person. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For an end to the discord and violence in our country, an end to all forms of racism and bigotry, that Christ's peace may reign, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For all who are on the front lines of the <laughs> coronavirus, especially our health care workers and our first responders, for all who are unable to stay at home, but must work to provide for their families. May God continue to protect them and keep them in good faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. In thanksgiving for the dedicated scientists who have worked tirelessly to develop what appears to be a promising COVID-19 vaccine, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all those who have asked us to pray for them, for those who have no one to pray for them, and for all the souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For all those who have died, especially James Burbage Jr., for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. For the needs and intentions of each person here, let us pray to the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. And in a special way, we pray for all those who are lonely, those who are without their families because of this virus, and those who are not able to travel to see their family, that they may be comforted by our Lord. We pray to the Lord. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Loving God, as we ready our hearts for your Son, grant that we may see your holy face in the faces of those who need, so that we might share from our blessings as you, as you have shared your blessings with each of us. We make this prayer through the one whose coming we long for, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In preparation for the gifts, our hymn, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people, light for the world to see. Christ be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the darkness. Christ be our light, shine in your church. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us. And may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation. And when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, James Burbage, Jr., for whom this Mass is offered and whom you've called from this world to yourself. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face and have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostle, St. Edmund, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And at our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin. 
and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy that you should enter under under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn, Spirit and Grace. Spirit and grace here in this meal, you are the wind that breathes through the field. Gather the wheat and form us in Christ. Come be our source and breath of life. In the Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in love and peace to share the good news of our Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have a wonderful Advent season. Thank, Thank you, Father. Father. Our closing hymn, City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all of those who weep. The people in darkness seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us 
us build the city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing for the Lord, our light and our love has turned.